Bye Hey guys, welcome back. It's Friday morning, 11 o'clock. We have Karen over here. Hey, Karen. Hey there. Say hello. Hello. Good. So um, <laughs> I think last show we did last week wasn't a complete disaster, was it? It was uh, It was close. It was close to a complete disaster. But I, I, in the end, I was really impressed. I was impressed with our make it go rightness. Did the whole show in a cab, and then we go into a tunnel. I mean, so that was like, oh, really? So we're a tunnel, so then it cuts off. and yeah. So anyway, we're back on track here. So um, uh, if you want to call in, if you have a question, if you have a burning question, the number is 866-561-4292. So uh, the topic is going to be a little different this week. We're going to talk about keto and intermittent fasting. Whoa. So, um, so if you have That's any questions. crazy. I know. I know. I want to kind of keep mix it up. Um, and also, anything that I say is not meant to diagnose you. It's just meant for your own research and your education and your uh, quest for finding answers in health. So check with your doctor before taking my advice. Now, we're going to go right to Diane. She's been waiting for an hour. So uh, go ahead, Diane. You, you, you had a question about, I think, you're waking up in the middle of the night. Good morning, Dr. Berg. Good morning. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you. I've learned so much from you. And awesome. I am doing your keto coach coaching right now. Oh, good. And, um, and learning even more because I watch all of your videos whenever they're out there. And um, so I just wanted to say that to first, first of all. And I also that every time I listen to your Friday shows, I, you, my, my question is answered because somebody calls in with a question that I've already had. Great. But I do have a question about um, waking up in the morning. It's usually about 4 a.m., which I know you talked about it being the adrenals. And um, so, and then, of course, I, have to, I get up and I go to the bathroom, which wakes me up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So the good thing is that I can go back to sleep. I have been taking the, your adrenal, uh, your cortisol support, um, probably since about March, and I'm still not getting to that point where I'm not waking up. So I didn't know if I should take the um, advanced formula of the adrenal support, if that would help. No, um, also, I, yeah, go ahead. Just, sorry, I was going to say is I, w I had gone through a couple of um, years where I had um, bronchitis or pneumonia every month. So I was on a lot of prednisone, a lot of antibiotics, and that was about a year and a half ago. And I do drink bone broth to help my stomach get back. I'm doing all that, those things, those positive things. But I still feel that it's my adrenals that haven't yeah. quite, you know, come to life. Sounds like it. Question, are you taking uh, the sleep aid at all? I'm sorry, the what? The sleep aid? Yes, I do take the okay. sleep aid. I take the... I take the cortisol support um, in, in the morning, and then I also take it. I'm intermittent fasting once a day, and I, and I feel fabulous. And um, I take it with my meal. Okay. A, a second time with my meal, and then I take the sleep aid when I go to sleep. Got it. Are you? And using... I fall right to sleep. Good massage tool. Are you using that? I use the massage tool. Okay. I, I'm doing everything. Everything you say is I'm doing. I'm Good. following your orders. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So a couple of things. Um, uh, you you're doing. Um, you put in these basics. What you're doing. You're taking the sleep aid, which is great. You're working on the adrenals. You had a history of the bronchitis, so there's definitely um, some weakness within the adrenal, especially if you have got, got you had to take steroids, uh, prednisone, because that just messes with your adrenals. So what happens, the, the rhythm of the adrenal gets off and now it's hard to sleep a little longer. One of the additional nutrients, which I hate to overload you um, with one more thing that you might want to add to the mix is um, a calcium orotate. And you take that two uh, before bed. That just gives you a little extra support for the adrenals because calcium is one of the minerals that supports the sympathetic nervous system, which the mag, uh, I'm sorry, calcium supports that. Potassium, magnesium, and a lot of the other minerals support the parasympathetic. So um, you could probably help yourself by doing that. The other thing that I would recommend, especially to kind of reset the adrenal, 
is to go on long walks to the point where you know you're running out all the stored energy in the body this kind of like you're you're moving low stress getting a lot of oxygen over a period of time so your body is in like can finally rest because uh, the way that you exercise your adrenals is low intensity walking um, without earphones, without talking to anyone, just get a lot, a lot of space. So that's what I would recommend. And then, of course, um, um, the calcium. That's what I would do right now for that. And um, I think that should help, Diane. So I can't wait to uh, complete the course and then start uh, uh, coaching people. So give us some feedback on that. Thanks for your call, Diane. So we're going to go right to Maddie. Um, that she's she's been holding for about an hour. Go ahead, Maddie. You're on the air. Uh, hi. I think it's me. It's Matisse. Yes, Matisse. I was just calling Maddie for yeah. short. I just your new nickname. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, that's perfect. It's like Henry Matisse, the artist. Yeah. Um. um <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I wanted to call uh, today. I've been following you for about a year. I have lost about 87 pounds. Um, I'm getting uh, close to that 100-pound mark. Um, tomorrow is my birthday. I will be 57 years old. Wow. Um, I, and I just wanted to call first and, and thank you and Karen. Um, I, I honestly feel that you are just doing God's work. You, you guys have saved my life. Um, I know... I, I'm not going to get teary, but I know I was on the road to diabetes, and um, my mother passed away at 57 years old with adult onset diabetes, um, and and so yeah, there's a bunch of that stuff in my family history, um, and for me, uh, allowing myself to get to uh, such a troublesome spot in my weight, my weight went up over 230 pounds and I say over because like I stopped looking at the scale once yeah. it was over 230 pounds wow. it was like um and so um so I have I'm 5'8 um I have brought it down to um now I'm in the one of 40 Wow. Um, I, Wait, you, you, you're 140? <laughs> that is amazing. You weigh 140 no, pounds? No, no. Uh, about 147. <laughs> I, I 147 pounds. That's amazing. <laughs> That's like yeah. a miracle. And I, think, it is, it is. and I think you also mentioned your, your estrogen is high. Is that true? I believe it is. My question was... Um, it, I, I watch a lot of your videos, and um, I heard you mention something about African Americans having a, a higher estrogen or insulin levels, and, and I was just wondering, and it, and it probably was related to an acne video I was watching. I was reading, I was watching a lot of your videos, and my family's issues were our constipation, acne, uh, my husband has high blood pressure, and and a lot of those things are all changing wow. uh, because of having the kale shake, having, um, we've changed, we're doing hormone-free, wow. whatever we can, hormone-free. Um, I haven't had any sugar in the house for over, well over a year now. Wow. Um, so, we're changing, but I wanted to touch base and, and ask you that question because I was wondering, is there a genetic component that causes sure. African-Americans to be more disposed yeah, to? Yeah, let me, let me answer that because that's a, that's a really good question. Um, estrogen okay. puts the, it controls uh, feminine characteristics. So it basically, um, you're going to look more like a female if you have more estrogen. Um, estrogen also gives you the fat layer around your, the superficial part of the fat around your body. Uh, it gives women the curves that they have. Um, uh, black women have more curves, so they obviously have a little more estrogen. That's what's causing it. Uh, so there is a genetic thing, but it's not an abnormal thing. It's like a, you're going to have a normal, you're still going to have normal amounts of estrogen. The thing that um, happens though, 
in all cultures, in all races, you have uh, environmental estrogens that are constantly hitting us from the food supply to your, um, the golf course to um, the medications. And that's really the problem. We're being bathed in estrogen. So you gotta be so cautious to that. And I think you're changing your diet, you're doing organic, but the GMO foods, you have soy and corn, it has glyphosate, those chemicals act like estrogen in the body. They're called endocrine disruptors or estrogen mimickers. So the best thing you can do is to take sea kelp. That really helps to reduce the uh, estrogen overload and then just start doing organic and non-GMO foods. The other thing that's good is to take uh, phytoestrogenic type foods that are, they call them anti-estrogenic foods like from cruciferous, but they're not really anti-estrogenic, they balance out the good and bad uh, estrogen. So they give you more good, they give you less bad. So they're kind of protective against the excess amount of bad estrogen. So that would be kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, all those. Those are the things that you want to start consuming and, and keep those high um, just to protect yourself. So, But well done on your great success. And, and happy birthday. And happy birthday. <laughs> so um, it's very impressive, 147 pounds. Amazing from 230, come on, that's incredible. That is awesome. Good, all right, Karen, so what, what's going on, do we, do we have some good questions on social media? We have a lot going on in social media already, right out the chute, okay. and I always do a little shout out to the world. So we have uh, Alabama, Massachusetts, India, Canada, Australia, Denmark, Florida, Virginia, Germany, Hong Kong, and a whole lot more. Wow. Thanks for joining us this morning. That's okay. incredible. I know. Okay, good. So um, from YouTube, I have um, Logan who is asking, w at what point would you add intermittent fasting to your keto diet? <clears throat> okay, so Logan, what you want to do is you want to do them exactly at the same time. Okay, exactly the same time. Why? Because they both work together. If you do intermittent fasting together, you're going to bring insulin down faster and you're going to get through this transition phase faster you're gonna have less symptoms, you're gonna um, speed up the results. So you wanna do them together. So you, you do three meals a day, and then push your breakfast forward, remember no snacks, and until you have two meals a day, and then a lot of people actually, I'd say maybe not the majority, but uh, a good portion, then do one meal a day. Good. Yeah. Okay, great. And then we have Jane from Facebook, who's asking about the Estrogen with DIM product. Can she take that instead of cruciferous? Well, <clears throat> there's a product I have called Estrogen Balance Plus DIM. Uh, DIM is a uh, compound. It's a very super concentrated cruciferous uh, natural compound that's like one tablet's equivalent to two pounds of, of cruciferous vegetables. So it's, um, so it's, it has it, so it basically has cruciferous in the product. Mm -hmm. um, so would you take it in place of it? Well, it, yes, because it specifically targets estrogen dominance and problems with estrogen and any history of too much estrogen. So that's a really good natural product that getting amazing results on that one. Uh, it's also good for even men that have um, you know, high estrogen. So if they have issues with that, that can help. But also cystic acne, it improves, it improves that. So wow. something to check out. Okay, so she can take that instead of the cruciferous. She doesn't yes. need to double up. No. Okay, good. So then I have Jennifer also from Facebook and she's asking, does she need to recalculate her carbs as she's dropping the weight? Well, <clears throat> there's one thing that stays constant is keeping those carbs low. Mm -hmm. So we want, you know, they say between 20 and 50 grams. I'm gonna recommend like 30 grams on average of carbohydrates per day, regardless of how much you weigh or what, what stage you're in, you wanna keep them low. On some people, they need to go down below 20 before they start even losing some significant weight. Uh, make a note of that. If you're okay. menopausal, have a thyroid issue. Did you look issue. at me? Did you just look at I me? I was when looking you said over that? there in space over there. I was looking at something in the distance. I okay. didn't look over this way. At me directly. No. I okay. was looking over here. Okay, good. Yeah. There's a person over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, good. And then we have Barb who asks, um, what about what's up with black stool on keto? Well, um, that's interesting because it could be something you're eating, you know, all the different um, uh, black cherries and, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I think it, 
If you actually have black stool, that could indicate you're running out of um, pancreatic enzymes. So uh -oh. you're going to need the gallbladder formula to actually take that because there's some problem and it's like black tarry stool it's called and that is a pancreatic deficiency of enzymes. So somehow uh, you're running out of those enzymes so I would put those back in um, and that would also give a symptom of the skid marks on the inside the toilet bowl. Just FYI. Okay, if you wanted that to know just, that. you just crossed the line. Is that too line? much information? It, was just, it, it just went south right there. I did there. a video I mean, on stool, and so I actually had a stool sample I passed around. I, <laughs> and, uh, I remember. What, remember that? I, had this, I do. I did this joke in my clinic. I had this little uh, container, and it says it's stool like a sample. Film, a film. Old, yeah. Old black. Camera film. Camera film container. So it's a stool sample, so I'd pass it around to my patients, and I would say, hey, your stool sample came in. You want to just check this out? And they would like look at me strange, open it up, and... This is brown. Yeah, and so they pulled out this little tiny little stool I made but I'm from pumped. wood in the basement. So I put that little stool in there, and that was my stool sample. Yes, that was So great. getting back to the questions... Okay, good. And one more I have here I noted down we have from YouTube, Greg, who is... He's asking about potassium chloride salt, and if using that is any source of potassium if maybe he wasn't getting his 7 to 10 cups a day. Yeah, you can use that. It's totally fine. You can use it. It it, it will help. I mean, how um, much salt do you need to take to replace a cup of vegetables? You mean you mean potassium? Potassium chloride salt. Yeah, it's it's called salt, but it's not salt. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's not like sodium chloride. So tell us what it is, because I maybe I'm the only it's, one. It's it's a form of know. it's a form of potassium. You are the only one that doesn't know that. Okay. But, um, it's okay. My my YouTube and Facebook people need to back me up on this. Right. Just. It's a, it's a form of potassium. There's many different forms. You have potassium chloride, potassium citrate, uh, gluconate. There's a lot of different orotate. There's a lot of different forms. Um, so it's a supplement. Yes, it is a supplement. The one that I use in the electrolyte powder is called potassium citrate, uh, oh, FYI. Okay. Um, but the thing is that you need a lot of it. You need um, 4,700 milligrams. So um, ideally, you want to get most of that from the vegetables, so you can always add more. Okay. Okay? All right. All right. So now, uh, Karen, we're going to go to Rod from Texas. He's been waiting for 58 minutes and 11 seconds. Okay. Hey, Rod. Hi, Dr. Burns. Thanks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks for taking my call again. Sure. Last week uh, we kind of had a bad connection. I remember hey, that. Um, yeah. I, so I only heard part of the answer, uh, and and I didn't hear an answer to my second question. So that's why I wanted to call back. Um, muscle cramps. Maybe I'm worrying too much about it, but my gosh, I get them in my arms, my legs, my back, my chest, you know, and it just, everything I try, it, they don't go away. I, I heard you say last week, vitamin B1 and vitamin E. So I've been doing the vitamin B1 and no, no, you know, I, I started, I was just doing one a day and now I'm doing two of those a day and, and still not really, I haven't noticed any improvements. I haven't tried the vitamin E yet, but I was looking the stuff up and it's like everything I'm eating has the vitamin B1 and E in it. So, uh, yeah. So I have a question. Do I need to worry about, I, I do I a, need to worry about this? I have a question. Oh, sure. Um, so you have muscle cramps. So is it when you exercise or you just find that the muscles are just like in a knot or describe it to me when you mean when you say muscle cramps um like like when i in the morning like when i waking up i'll stretch i'll feel it like in my calves or like when i was just standing here waiting for things to happen i i stretched and i i had a had a cramp in my arm and then it went away and then i tried to make it happen again that wouldn't happen again so okay. It's, so another question: it, it just kind of, Are you are you taking okay. are you taking any medication at all? No. Okay, because that could be one of the side effects from like statins and things like that. Um, do you have a history of uh, nerve damage, spine damage, um, like any type of neurological damage? Uh, I don't think so. I've been in some bad car wrecks and I've broken a lot of bones. But, okay. Uh, nothing nerve-wise. I do have a heart problem history. 
Okay. So here, here's what I think that's going on, uh, Rod. I would definitely get some uh, extra high quality vitamin E. e vitamin E helps support those muscles. Um, and you might just need extra, probably from a past history of your injuries. I had a lot of injuries, my, my spine and uh, car accidents, you name it, motorcycle accidents. So um, you have these, this trauma that's more of an injury. So it's not really a mineral deficiency. Um, it's a basically an old injury that is putting the muscles in a state of guarding. What happens when you get either arthritis or a bone on bone or any type of old injury, the muscles go into pro to a protective mechanism as a kind of a survival thing to keep it immobilized. And then you move it and you can actually cause that same sensation. What will help that is um, higher vitamin E and also stinging nettle root because that actually is like a natural anti-inflammatory. Also look up some of my videos on old injuries, how to deal with old injuries because I think your problem is, is a little different than just a, a muscle cramp. I think it's reactivating an old injury. That's my thought, but um, let me know how that works, Rod, but thanks for calling them back after the tunnel experience. <laughs> um, all right, good. So we're going to go to Zeke from Georgia. You had a question about blood sugars. Go ahead. Hi, um, this is actually Megan. He is my son. He called. He oh, called okay. you a couple of weeks ago. The little, the little eight-year-old that called. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. That, that was. He's great. Yeah, that was my son. Yeah, he was, he was funny. But um, okay, so this week my question is about um, thyroid medication. I um, I have been doing keto now since January and was feeling like I wanted to come off of. I'm taking Nature Throid and wanting to come off of the Nature Throid. Um, and started weaning myself off and was feeling great. Um, but I went to get my labs done and my A1 or uh, my TSH was um, 16. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to have to go back on. But during that time, my blood sugar was coming down even more. And I've always been over 100 fasting. But um, when I was off the medication, my blood sugar fasting was like in the 90s. And then once I started the medication, it went up, and I did a little bit of research and found that that, that is a hidden side effect of thyroid medication, both the desiccated and the, the um, other synthetic. Um, so I'm just wondering, it's frustrating for me because I've seen those numbers be lower and now they're higher again. Um, is there anything um, further to support the thyroid um, or, you know, to help me to wean off of it, to be able to get off yeah. of it eventually. Yes. Do you have a history of any type of gallbladder problems or liver problems? Um, just, I've had general um, gallbladder um, pain throughout my pregnancies. I've had three babies, and, um, you know, since I've been using your gallbladder support, I haven't had the pain, but I've never okay. had it removed or anything like that. Okay. And then what about, um, do you have a history of heavy periods? or a painful, crampy period? Um, yes, as a teenager, yes. Because the high levels of estrogen can actually interfere with the thyroid. The goal is to get to the root cause of the problem. Of, of It's either going right. to be estrogen related or it's going to be gallbladder liver related. So you're already taking the gallbladder, so that's going to help the conversion. And then one last thing, uh -huh. um, um, believe it or not, this you, you may want to try this, and I'm not saying it's going to be the answer, but you use this mm -hmm. tool and I have videos on it too, um, that actually helps support the acupressure points in the lower part of the neck. So if you actually apply this to the lower part of the neck, it just brings circulation into the, the glands on the front part. I know it sounds might sound strange, but I've, I've recommended it to a lot of people, and it seems to give people that little extra edge that they need to um, uh, improve things. So go ahead and try that, and then I would also um, increase selenium and a little bit more iodine and see if that doesn't help you. And you can get that from Seek Help. Okay? All right. Thanks for your call. All right. So now, Karen, yeah. um, we're going to go to a, a f the first question of the day. Okay? So here's what you want to oh. ask uh, everyone. Or actually, I'm going to ask and then we'll look at the answers. Okay. What pH should the body be at? Should it be more alkaline or more acid? Okay, so see if you guys can answer that question. I'm dying to find out what you're going to say. Okay? Okay. All right, so let's uh, go to some questions uh, from 
from your side here. Okay, good. Well, um, I have, first of all, I just want to say that on Facebook, Jeremy just announced very casually that he lost 150 pounds. Gosh, that's incredible. It's incredible. Jeremy, well done. awesome. Well yeah, done. Incredible. You're the inspiration, right? That's right. Okay, good. And then we have a question which I love from Jen on Facebook. Jen, girl after my own heart. She says, if fat bombs don't increase your insulin, which they don't, right? Dr. Berg. Well, not if they're sitting on a shelf. <laughs> no, 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 no. If fat bombs don't increase your insulin, why can't <clears throat> they be snacked on throughout the day versus just at mealtime? Well, where's my guidance physiology? That's what I want to know. You left um, it at home. So there's one little piece of the puzzle that uh, I want to bring up. That okay. is that anytime you eat anything of any type of calories, regardless of what it is, Karen, yeah. fat, protein, or carb, doesn't matter. And Jen, Karen and Jen. And Jen, what's going to happen? You're going to increase insulin. So the fact that you're snacking between a meal means you are going to in increase insulin. So in fact, a fat bomb will increase your insulin. Yes, but fats in general have the least effect over insulin. But they still have an effect because you're eating something. Mm. I'm sorry, Jen. Jen, sad day for you and me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, okay. I, had, I, I mean, we, we had a friend, a guy that was eating the keto bombs all day long, and uh, that kind of yeah. stopped him from losing weight. <laughs> well, he gained weight because, yeah, first of all, he made fat bombs. He didn't call them fat bombs. He called them cookies. He made them. They were like this big each, and he loved them. Yeah. So he, he ate a lot of them and gained weight. Because, right, your body will then burn the dietary fat, the fat you're eating, and not your own body fat. Or I guess then, obviously, he was accumulating fat. Or what? Is that that's going to make him fat? Well, this is now a question. I've moved over into a question. It sounds like a statement. Well, he's just increasing insulin every time he's uh, snacking. See, the thing is, what's the, the killer, the killer to hormones um, and progress is the healthy snacks. That's what's doing it. It's the concept like, of healthy snacks. No, the actual healthy snacks. Or the, I mean, I'm, I'm going beyond just snacking in general. Okay. Like you go to the grocery store, they have the protein bars, they have these so-called healthy things. Yeah, granola, sugar, we know that. But then what people don't realize, it's even the beef jerky and the healthy snacks, that's what's killing them because mm. it's, uh, it's keeping them spiked with the insulin and it's going to lower testosterone, it's going to lower all the different other hormones because of the next question I'm going to get to, but I'm not going to give it away right now. But okay. anyway, so let's get back to the, I think you had another question? Um, yeah, a couple of people on Facebook were asking questions related to the liver and fatty liver. So let's just say, what's up with a fatty liver? Well, the fatty liver uh, is directly caused by too much insulin. Mm. If a person has a belly, they have a fatty liver. Just do an ultrasound. You'll find it'll be it'll be fatty. So, um, what happens is the fat cells only can hold so much fat until you can't stuff anything in more uh, more into it, and then it spills off and it overfills into around the organs, primarily starting with the liver. So when you have a fatty liver, your body is in a overstuffed state mm. to the point where you see some people that their bellies are so distended, you can literally put a plate on the top of their stomach when they sit down it comes out like a basketball and you usually see these guys <laughs> you're at the, very graphic today you see these guys at the all-you-can-eat buffets um, which I basically um, go to go to them frequently no I'm just kidding and then also on the beach with the speedo that's where you really see the body shape so uh, it's just a demonstration of if you wanted to see someone with a fatty liver you can predict that so the next time you go and see a guy just go up to him and say um, excuse me sir did you have your liver checked you might want to get it checked. Now I have a question go to for my you. Website. I have a question for you. Yes. Because you say that the fatty liver occurs when the rest of the fat cells are saturated, right? Yeah. So what about the guy in the speedo with the big belly? Because he's always got skinny arms and legs. He does his fat cells Can aren't. I, yeah. If, if I knew that, would I be sitting here right now? <laughs> Yeah, is this so happens That's the that Dr. Berg the answer. receptors for insulin for men are primarily in the torso and the viscera, not apparently in the legs or the arms. Oh, okay? interesting. 
Now, um, let's see. So do we have answers to my first question? Okay. Um, let's see. Alkaline. Uh, we got a little off track. Let me look. Let me look. Because what we've been pH talking. What pH should the body be? What alkaline pH? So, so you're looking for alkaline acid or are you looking for a number? I'm just looking for an answer. <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? Okay, guys. Let's see. What we have got here. Acid, 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 slightly alkaline, alkaline, acid, alkaline, more acid. All right. Uh, pH of seven, acid, both. I'm ready for a drum roll. Okay, drum roll. Okay, guys, it was a trick question. Yes, I it's, knew that. There is no one pH. You have about 15 to 20 different pHs from the urine the large bowel, to the stomach, to the saliva, they're all different pHs. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to be all alkaline or more acid, you need to be a combination. The purpose, Karen, of the different, uh, different acids have to do with keeping things, the different gradients separated to allow for flows to the body, uh, fluid that flows, and, and generating a, 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 you know, energy between both areas. So if your body was all one pH, you'd have mm -hmm. a lot of problems. Things would, wouldn't move. They would be stuck. Interesting. Kind of like a battery. You have a positive and negative. So you get a flow of, cur of current. Same thing with the different pHs, Karen. Mm-hmm. See, I had yeah. uh, Tayeb Te on Facebook, and he says it depends on the part of the body. He was correct. He was correct. He was correct. Well done. Yes. So we're going to go right to Karen from San Jose, waiting 40 minutes. Go ahead, Karen. You had a question. Um, hi, Dr. Berg. Hi. Um, thank you for taking up my call. Sure. Go ahead. What was your question? So I called in last week um, um, regarding uh, a pain. Hello? Hello? I can hear you. Um, okay. So uh, sorry about that. So last week I called um, regarding pain on my back, the le um, upper left side, and you have suggested to reduce fat intake, which I did. And in a day, the pain went away like a miracle. <laughs> so wow. I'm calling to first thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, and then um, if I could ask another question for today is, uh, since few years I've been dealing with um, this acne inversa is the skin disease name that I heard from my doctor. Basically, these are um, inflamed and swollen lumps. Um, that occur mostly like under arms, uh, the groin area, and these are painful definitely. Um, and my primary doctor suggested to avoid all night shade vegetables, which I've done, um, but still um, the the occurrence reoccurrence has been going on. I I am 39 years old. I am on intermittent fasting since five weeks plus keto. Of course, I started both together. Um, so the inflammation of this uh, skin condition hasn't gone up or it went down. It's about the same before uh, I started okay. um, intermittent fasting or ketosis. Okay. So, so my we, question is, is there anything I could do at home to yeah. you know, help with this? Okay. So, so Karen had a question and she, wanted, she has a condition called acne, acne um, inversa, which is basically a condition, it's a type of acne that occurs underneath the armpits uh, and different folds in the body and of course they don't know who, what, it, what what's causing it but there's some associated things like higher levels of androgen it comes after um, taking birth control pills etc cetera, etc cetera. but the point is that that condition is definitely high androgens coming from high insulin so whatever you're doing right now keep improving it um, because it's a high insulin behind it, because it's also a response to antibiotics too, so there's an immune component. But what I would do to speed it up, and that's your question, Karen, is you can add sea kelp. Add um, a good amount of sea kelp in the morning, not before you go to bed, because it'll keep you up. Sea kelp uh, will improve things. And by the way, um, a lot of times people have these little cysts, these boils or these cysts behind the legs or underneath the armpit. If you have that, that's also a high insulin situation. It looks like acne, but it's a cyst, and that can be greatly improved if you actually get on the keto and intermittent fasting. Okay? 
So that's what I'm going to recommend to do. All right, so let me just go to Jim uh, from Denver. Jim, go ahead. You had a question. <laughs> oh, thanks for taking my call. Um, <laughs> what was so funny? Yeah, it was basic. <laughs> well, I've been listening to you for probably a few months now, and I really appreciate everything that you've got out there, especially. Um, haven't tried any of your products yet, but you did mention eggs and like how to take eggs as like your vitamins and that you should possibly be taking, you know, more egg yolks than egg whites. And I thought, well, that's good. Um, but my question was, is it okay to just eat them raw in a shake or just have them any which way? I don't know how you're taking your eggs every day, but if you're taking four, it seems like a lot. So yeah. good question. Go so, ahead. Yeah. So basically, um, I do four eggs over easy. I like the yolks runny. Um, you can do raw eggs. Um, you just have to make sure that the quality, um, if you eat um, a significant amount of raw eggs, it can deplete like um, vitamin biotin, okay, which is actually vitamin H, if you want to know that. Um, but it can actually deplete biotin. I mean, you'd have to probably have a lot of that. So that's one of the reasons why you can maybe slightly cook them or make, have them slightly... You know, maybe just the yolks um, raw, but the other part uh, slightly cooked. Or, um, but you can still do them raw if you want. If you want to put them in a shake, not a problem. But I do four eggs every morning, rain or shine. I'm just, I constantly, I love them. The, the yolks have uh, all these fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin K2, uh, vitamin A for the uh, vision. And uh, so that's what I'm going to recommend uh, for pretty much everyone. There's unless you have an allergy to eggs. Um, but make sure it's pasture-raised, organic. Uh, that would be the best. Thanks, Jim, for your call. All right, Karen. Yes. What's the giggles over there? Oh, I, I sometimes, you know, we type with fingers and there are typos. Okay. And uh, so this guy, E-Man, I think, is he's wondering if, if you should eat um, salted nuts or rough nuts. Yeah, the rough nuts, you want to polish them down a little bit before you eat them because the, the jagged edges can irritate your throat. Right. Um, but I would do salted. I like salt. Um, it'd be good if you could find a sea salt nut. That would be a hard nut to crack. But that would be, yeah, sea salt would be good with that. Good. good. Okay. All right, was that all, all your questions? No, oh, okay. no. Okay. I just, you were taking some calls, so I was, I was just reading some things here. Um... Yeah, so, um, hey, somebody had a question, I can't find it right now, but somebody had a question uh, thinking that keto um, or intermittent fasting could possibly have a negative effect on women's hormonal issues and slow down metabolism, which is just the opposite <coughs> of what I understand. The, so. the only damaging thing that keto will do and intermittent fasting will do is... Um, uh, create a dent into the income of certain manufacturing companies that sell junk food. That's uh -huh. really the damage in certain pharmaceutical that's companies. That's a side effect. Yeah, that's the only damage. In fact, you know, it's almost like you have to ignore those comments because um, it, I mean, here you are reducing insulin and that's going to be damaging to your ins uh, metabolism. It's just the opposite. Doing healthy keto and intermittent fasting is the exact thing the best thing you can do for your metabolism, it will speed it up. If you, if you have a, like a set point that you can't bust through and lose that last 10 pounds or whatever, it's only because you have high insulin. That's why. That's mm -hmm. behind it. So you just fix that and you're going to be good to go. Okay. So I have one more question. Okay. Okay. So Sue on YouTube is saying, um, what's up with this high fasting blood sugar even though she's got a normal A1C. Yeah, good question. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I was waiting for someone to ask that question. And can maybe you can touch on what A1C is for people who aren't all yeah. so sophisticated and knowing, yeah. like me. A1C is an average of uh, your blood sugars over like three months. Okay, so it's a better indicator because if you check your blood sugars, let's say one day, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't have the whole picture of the three months. 
Right. So A1C is an average. So there's a little conflict there. She's saying resting blood sh fasting blood sugar is high. Well, I didn't get to that question yet. You okay. just want to know what A1C is. Okay. So, so here's the thing. When you are doing keto and you are doing intermittent fasting and your blood glucose goes up, okay, and you're like, oh my God, that's bad, that's bad. Well, think about what keto does. What, do you, what, do, what does it do? It actually corrects insulin resistance. It corrects high insulin, okay? And as you know, Karen, the purpose of insulin is to bring down sugars. Right. So what's going to happen is as you improve insulin, that push down wave that's pushing the blood sugars down, mm -hmm. what's going to initially happen to your blood sugars if you actually no longer have the massive amounts of insulin in your bloodstream? Mm, you might see the blood sugar go up. That's normal. That's just the body's res like healing in this response. So there's nothing you have to worry about other than realizing that, hey, good, my insulin is coming down. And by the way, high levels of insulin is much more damaging to the body than high levels of sugar. Hmm. And she's going to notice that her blood sugars are not going to go way out of range. It might be 100, 110, 120, but it's not going to go really high. And, and then over time, it will come down. Okay. But it's part of the healing process, Karen. Okay, and that was the, the last part of her question was how long is this healing process? What should she see? Well, it really depends on how bad it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you had insulin resistance like I had since birth, um, it could take a couple, <laughs> a couple years. It was that Mountain Dew in the baby bottle. Yes. Yes, that was me. I was the... I, I, my producer's laughing. I, I saw someone do that, feed their child from a baby is that bottle, bad? feeding them Mountain Dew. Is that bad? Is that okay. bad? Okay. So I'm going to go to... Uh, there's a question number two that I have for all the, the viewers on YouTube and Facebook. Okay, you ready for this? Kind? I'm ready. Okay. What are the three dominating hormones that um, will basically nullify any of the other hormones in the body. There Say are, that again. There are three hormones in the body that are dominating, which m means that if they're high, all the other ho hormones will go down. Okay? And I want to see if some of you guys can guess the three dominating hormones that kind of like control all the other hormones. Okay. And in the presence of these hormones, um, the other hormones just don't work that well. Mm. Okay? So let's see if you can guess the three hormones. Okay. Okay? Three hormones. All right. So... Now we're going to go right to a question from Jason. Chicago, go ahead. You had a question, Jason. Yeah, hey, Dr. Bird. Thank Hi. you um, for taking my question and, my t and your time, especially. Um, so my experience with keto recently, I come from a strength background, powerlifting, and then got kind of into CrossFit and had this, uh, this ideology kind of branded into me of eating as much as I could six times a day yeah. and kind of you know, gaining muscle mass, but then, you know, becoming, you know, also overweight and stuff. But long story short, um, I'm also a, a recovered alcoholic who sees in the 12-step the program I go to and saw it myself, just a lot of, a lot of people with sugar addiction, you know, once they recover, they still are, you know, pounding donuts and stuff. And I saw myself, you know, going down that path. And uh, finally had a brother who was a, uh, he was a competitive bodybuilder and did the the ketosis thing years ago and it was frowned upon and then I guess long story short I just kind of just surrendered to the fact that I didn't know what was best for me with my diet and I wanted to try the simplest most effective way and about four weeks ago I said okay let's try keto got the keto strips and um, to say it's been you know a life change a remarkable event is is to downplay it a little bit but my biggest concern is am I eating enough you know I I, I don't have a lot of desire to eat a lot of food. You know, I have a, um, for breakfast, I, I have the bulletproof coffee with the coconut oil and the, and the butter. And then lunch, I eat at least two to three cups of spinach and some super greens with, uh, I try to have some kind of protein with it, with avocado. And then, uh, same thing for dinner with some, maybe some grass fed beef. Um, and I haven't really been struggling with eating, you know, craving sugars or anything at all. I just crave vegetables more than anything. Wow. Um, I just want to make sure I'm eating eating plenty of food because my old ideas of having to, to sustain, you know, an active lifestyle is to, to eat 3,500 to 4,000 calories a day. And just, yeah. So just Jason, work, Jason you're basically, just, you're yeah. describing my story too, because I was like on the mission to just cram as much food down my throat as possible thinking, oh my gosh, I have to get my nutrients, I have to do this. 
Yeah, it's false. That's false information. Um, especially, it sounds to me like you're on a two meal per day uh, intermittent fasting, which I think that's probably really good for you. The fact that you're craving vegetables means that your body's going into balance, and you're probably your liver's like, uh, give me some more vegetables so you can start eventually healing it uh, from the alcohol years ago. So. Um, the liver can repair itself, but it does take like three years of consistent healthy eating. The healthy keto that I'm recommending in intermittent fasting is hands down the absolute best thing for your liver. And as you realize that your hunger is going down, your cravings are going down, um, that means your blood sugars are loving off. And so the amount of nutrients that you need now will be less because your body is, um, uh, is improving with that insulin resistance because the insulin also functions to help absorb nutrients. So before, when you had a lot of insulin resistance, you had to cram more food to get the nutrients because you had this blockage. Now, after you fix that, now your body can absorb nutrients much better, and intermittent fasting allows you to go into what's called autophagy, which is your body is now recycling the old proteins, um, cleaning up things, and, and the amount of nutrients requirements are much less. So you can get by with a lot less food and maintain muscle and health and not have to go for all those calories. So just, I would just play around with it, eat high quality food like you're doing, and ride the wave. And um, I think you don't really need any more nutrients other than what you're getting. So, but thanks for your call. I'm glad that you're winning and just give it more time. Awesome, Jason. All right, so Karen. Yeah, the answers. Yeah. Okay, so team team Facebook yeah. is uh, pretty consistent. They're all coming out with estrogen, okay. insulin, all right. and cortisol. Hmm. Team YouTube has insulin and cortisol in almost every answer, but then that third one is sort of all over the map. There okay. are some guys, you know, answering also with estrogen, but there's a lot of other... Uh, other things going on. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's just do a, um, a trumpet roll. A trumpet roll. <laughs> I like that. Okay, good. <clears throat> awesome. supposed to and, go run somewhere and, now. And the answer is cortisol, estrogen, and insulin. Whoa. So you guys were correct. Um, good. He, he, well done. <laughs> <laughs> so because he, here's the thing. The, those three hormones... Um, it's just fascinating because if you wanted to lose weight, if you wanted to get younger, if you wanted to improve your hormones, you know, there's all these things out there, oh yeah, take this hormone or do this thing to trigger it, exercise, eat better, blah, 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 right? But in blah, the presence blah, blah. of the cortisol from stress, in the presence of the estrogen from birth control pills and other things uh, in the food supply and insulin, which we know all, all, know, all know about that, it, it's like almost like a waste of all this extra energy. And this is, this is why when people go, oh yeah, I want to eat what I want, so I'm just going to exercise more. Well, guess what? That little bit of thing that you want to eat is going to invalidate and nullify seven hours of exercise. You're not mm -hmm. going to get the benefit. So it's not just a matter about eating healthy 80% of the time. You, you need to go all in sometimes and try and especially with the sugars and the carbs. All right, so that's all and I'm so saying And so all that. in, you mean? Like you don't want to do it halfway. Like, so you're um, referring to the food or you're referring to the intermittent fasting? I'm mainly, mainly I'm talking about the carbs Okay. and the sugars. That's the main thing. So when you, you hear people say, well, I'm mostly yeah. doing keto. Yeah. Most of the time I'm doing keto, I'm not seeing any results. Yeah, on the weekends. So mm -hmm. it's like, well, then don't come to me with uh, no results because we know why you're plateauing. And so I'm just the messenger. It's the don't cheat day. Me. It's yeah. the cheat day. It's the cheat day. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, good. Good. So let me just uh, take a call from uh, Colleen from Alberta, Canada, which is the, um, that's where they have the, um, I think the Calgary Stampede or the that's fair, right? You betcha. I'm from Cowtown originally. Oh. So I'm the crazy Canuck Colleen calling you guys. Oh, great. <laughs> and I it's always good to have at least numbers. one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I had my blood pulled. My insulin was 63.7. Lipid profile, 
cholesterol, 5.25, HDL, are you taking notes? 1.83, triglycerides, 0.53, LDL, 3.18, and non-HDL, 3.42. He did the Framingham risk score on me. I'm at 4%. He was blown away with my triglycerides. And my TSH progressive is 1.84. So my question is, after watching your Skype with Mr. Cummings, should... Actually, that's kind of a dumb question. I think <laughs> Thank I you should for have calling. the framing <laughs> score done. Yeah, <laughs> I think that the framing on risk score done, because if 4% is so great, but then they talk about the calcium in the heart, and I'm wondering what other tests I should have done, even with hormones. Yeah. This is the most important thing, and I'm glad you brought this up. The coronary artery calcium test, it's a scoring test, is hands down a thousand times more important than the cholesterol testing uh, because it, the, the calcium in the artery, specifically the coronary artery, which actually feeds the heart muscle, um, is the best predictor of what's happening to the body to repair damage in the heart. When the body has a damaged artery, it heals it with a Band-Aid with calcium and some cholesterol, but mainly calcium. So if you see placking in the artery, in the coronary from this test, um, you can be pretty sure how long you're going to live, you know, because it's, it's just a much better predictor, not even just from cardiovascular heart attacks, but from overall mortality, even from cancer and kidney and lung uh, uh, deaths. So that's actually fascinating information. So the test is not that expensive. It takes a few minutes to do, and it's invasive. And so next time you go to your doctor, Ask them for a CAC, cal, uh, coronary artery calcium scoring test. Get it done um, because it'll, it'll give you great data. If your score is over 400, you, you might, you might want to write your will out and make sure you plan that out because that's a severe situation. But you can reverse it if you get on keto and intermittent fasting and do it healthily. You can stabilize it and bring it down. So um, you want it zero. You don't want calcium in the arteries. So, and you can actually be asymptomatic. You can have normal cholesterol, normal blood sugars, and have your arteries fill up with calcium. So it is the hands down the best indicator of you know, dying or mortality. Um, and the, if your score is zero, um, you're not going to die of a heart attack. You may be hit by a bus or um, something, <laughs> but it's not going to be a heart attack. So, can, can I have that in writing? Yes, I will give you a warranty and a guarantee on that. Okay, yep. money, money back guarantee. Yep. But thanks, Colleen. Um, yeah, and call, and call us next time with the results of that test when you get it, okay? All right, I want to go to uh, Jerry. He's been waiting. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia. You had a question, Jerry. Go ahead. Hey, Dr. Burke. How are you, sir? Good. Great. Quick question. It regarded the intermittent fasting. I was 213. I went on black beans and uh, boiled eggs. I dropped down to 167 in a little over a month, along with some apple cider vinegar. Now, since then, I've been in a you know, highly stressed sales position, and I gained the 13 pounds back because my diet switched now to basically uh, rice, no more spinach, no more greens, and uh, the black bean to egg thing kind of stopped too. My question is, I saw your information on the adrenal glands, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if, of course, if I get the uh, the uh, adrenal gland formula that you have, would I have to go back to uh, the eggs, the spinach, uh, the apple cider vinegar to, to basically get down to at least maybe 175? Got it. Yeah, well, you know, if you just if you just take a pill, you don't have to change your diet. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That I'm teasing. Um, here's what you need to do. You need to do both because they're two separate problems. One is the stress. Okay. I think I think you would really benefit um, from the adrenal cortisol and support formula. That would uh, and you take um, take more as needed. But uh, if there's you're going to feel like a sense of relief. You'll be able to get through your day a lot easier. And if there's anyone in your environment that's also stressful, whether it's a spouse or your boss, slip it in their coffee, and they'll all of a sudden, after like five minutes, they'll just start being really nice to you. And you're like, why are they so chilled out? So it's a really good, 
a de-stressitizer. But you definitely need to go back to the low carb, no rice, no beans, and follow that. And the reason for that is because you want to think long term what you're trying to do with your weight. It's not just about that, it's about health and your tolerance for stress will improve. And then the last thing I want to mention, and then I'll shut up, um, is that you need to um, um, watch my videos and get more education on why you should do these things. And I have techniques too on, the, on how to reduce stress. Um, but stress depletes nutrients. So at the end of the day, um, you want to minimize stress and damage control because when you're in the stress states, you don't really think long term. You're in the moment, or not really in the moment. You're kind of maybe out of the moment, and you you will do things that you you're not consciously aware of. Sometimes you'll eat things that you don't you regret. So it's all about um, creating your body, creating health constantly, and just keeping it as a new habit. Um, because when stress comes, people go for this instead of that. So that is what I would do if I were you, Jerry. But I'm just making a suggestion. But thanks for your call. All right, Karen. Tell, tell us, uh, give, it, give me a good question. You know, there. you know what I want to say first is what I'm really noticing here on Facebook and YouTube, and particularly Facebook this morning, is that I can see that there's a lot of very Dr. Berg educated people on here. And I mean, you guys may not know this, but we don't have moderators answering your questions. Um, we have in the past, um, and I, I'm not doing that. I'm just fielding questions so that I can throw them to Dr. Berg. But there are a lot of people on this platform that know exactly what the answers are, and they're helping each other, and they're routing people to your videos. And I'm just wow, really, that's great. I know, I'm really impressed with that. I really appreciate it's you amazing. guys knowing your stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's okay. see. So I did have a question. Um, I have, um, this is Facebook, Julie, this was a question she asked a little while ago uh, about hep C and yeah. keto. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, hepatitis C and keto, that's a virus in the liver. Um, think about, <clears throat> I wouldn't just do keto, I would do intermittent fasting because that's going to increase something called autophagy, which will then take a huge stress off the immune system and the body will start to... Um, actually clean up viruses and decrease inflammation um, as in hepatitis itis of the liver. So that's what I would do if I were you. Uh, not to mention that um, microbes tend to thrive more in a high sugar environment. So I think that would be good and then I would do it with super high uh, end nutrients type foods like huge amounts of salad, a lot of uh, bell peppers for the vitamin C and uh, I would even um, peel the outside of lemons, chop them up, and I would eat the whole lemon because mm. you can get a lot of bioflavonoids, a lot of vitamin C for that. Um, there, there are some videos I have on, on hepatitis. Um, you can watch them online for more data on that. But I do have to answer one last question, and I wanted to just kind of, kind of some, uh, just some, uh, pretty much just end off on that question. So you're going to answer a question or you're going to ask a question? No, um, I just want to say thank you for that question. Oh. And um, then I wanted to go, I want to see if there's any other questions before I answer this question. <laughs> Are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Take two. Okay. So do you have any other questions, Karen? I do. Okay, good. Okay, good. So there is a question Viola was, was asking. She did keto and then she did have and lost 24 pounds, um, wow. had some gallstones. Wow. And um, I guess she's relating the gallstones to the keto. So she's a little concerned, could keto cause the gallstones? Um, <clears throat> what to do about that? If you're doing he healthy keto, like I'm recommending with all the vegetables, you're not going to cause increase in gallstones because gallstones come from high insulin or high cortisol or high in uh, estrogen, mm. Karen. Okay. So by adding um, keto into this, you're actually increasing saturated fats normally, and that's what makes more bile, which helps dissolve any stones. Mm. So that's really what you need to think about um, when you're doing this. But if you have gallstones, um, I would take the gallbladder formula as a way of adding in bile salts to help support that. Mm. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And then also, I forgot, I had one more question for everyone. Okay. Yeah. And here it is. What vitamin deficiency causes night blindness? <clears throat> I know that. You're driving at night and you're, you, just went to, you just can't see in the dark. I think that's an easy okay. one. I think well, these guys are going to know. Let's see what they say. Okay. Okay, so as you answer that and ponder that, I'm going to go to uh, <laughs> Aaliyah from Florida. You had a question. Aaliyah, go ahead. Yeah, so, okay, I have two questions. Okay. Um, one has to do with a friend of mine who she has taken a medication, a Loxitron, for high blood pressure, and she says it's making her gain weight. Is there any alternative um, to that as opposed to taking the pills? Got it. You talk about like a medication, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, the, she should change her diet, et cetera. She doesn't do any like of the keto or intermittent fasting. Okay. And then your other question? My other question is, I don't know if you can answer this. I have, when I got tested for, I have a lot of food allergies. And when I got tested um, at, at the allergist, um, I, I, are they testing for food that has, that's like processed or like, because when I have organic eggs versus uh, processed, it, it's a big difference in my body. I don't get inflamed. I don't feel, you know, I don't have like a, fuzzy headache, I don't get sleepy. Good question. Very good. So let me just answer that one first because when you go get allergy testing, a true allergy involves a protein. So they're going to be uh, testing certain proteins in foods. They're not going to be checking preservatives, inorganic, organic, quality of food. They're just checking for a very specific immune response that involves protein. <laughs> So you, you're going to probably react to a low-quality egg, for example, just because the system, it's just, just because of the quality of it. And so that might not be an allergy. It could be a sensitivity to something, not a true allergy. Um, like, for example, I can eat something high-quality and just my, it's just like it's perfect on my system, and then I'll eat the same type of food or even vegetable that's low-quality, and it just like doesn't quite feel right. And that's, I think that's what you're running into. So... Yeah, they're not going to test the processed foods. Uh, okay, so the next question is blood pressure. Um, the best way to deal with blood pressure is to get to the root cause. And you want to lower insulin by doing healthy keto and intermittent fasting. And the reason for that is the high insulin makes the arteries stiff. It causes the calcium to accumulate, making, causing hardening of the arteries and the placking. So um, your blood pressure should come down if you're doing keto and intermittent fasting. Uh, real nicely and it's more corrective. The arteries become more flexible and elastic and the blood pressure comes down and it's like it's, it's just using food. Um, so that's what I would recommend. I would highly recommend that to your friend um, as a way to naturally improve it. So thank you very much. Okay, so now we're going to go to the answer. What was the answer to my question, Karen? Okay, so right out of the gate, Team YouTube came out with strong vitamin A. Couple really? variants, but A, A, A. Really? Yeah. And then wow. Team Facebook was all over the place and then settled into vitamin A. So both teams this morning say vitamin A for the most part. Well, I think I need a trumpet for that one then. Uh-oh. <laughs> so corny. Okay, the answer is vitamin A. Yay! You are correct. Vitamin A supports the eyes. It allows you to see in the dark. Without it, you become um, blinded. Blind as a bat. Blinded in the dark. By the light. Blinded in the dark. By the night of the notion of the... You're right. Exactly. Yeah. No one really knows what that next phrase is yeah. in that song. Yeah. Hey, guys. I want to thank you so much for your incredible comments and your questions and your success stories. Um, we'll be back awesome. next week. Right, Karen? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. All right, have a great weekend. <laughs> See you later. Okay, bye.